Joining me right now on Kumite Radio is Janae Harding, Bellator Featherweight. What's going on, Janae? Nothing much. What's going on with you, man? Nothing much. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is your last fight. I talked to you before that fight. Bellator 199, yeah. you went to San Jose. You dropped the decision. Coming out of that fight, what was your mindset moving forward? Um, Obviously, it was a bit, like, initially hindering. Um, It was such a big opportunity and such like a lot of pressure going in to your like your Bellator debut and such a big promotion and um, not coming away with the win was a little bit disheartening but um it was just kind of like 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 most of my losses it's always more motivation to come back stronger and and that cliche I guess of proving yourself next time but like uh just more in a um in like a critical way of what I did wrong and what I really should have worked on for that camp and for um, the fight in in itself. Um, it was such a big jump in promotion. I mean, going from Australian promotions and fighting in Hong Kong and kind of smaller shows to such a massive large jump where you've got like 50 cent in the crowd and like crazy stuff like that. And you're traveling halfway around the world. All of that like taking into account um, kind of it was a bit of a shock almost like um, when I got in there and I thought like I thought at the time I was taking in my stride I mean we're in San Jose everything's happening it was such a busy week but then like when I actually got into the cage and walked into the cage I was very like um, step back I guess mm. and like oh shit there's like at least 10,000 people here and it's crazy and um, yeah I think like that in itself taking that into my next fight will make a like a massive difference and it'll be so much more beneficial for me now that I've got that experience behind me. Since that fight, you know, you've been spotted in Asia and Europe. Did you feel the need to take a break and travel around? Um, kind of. It was it was almost like I was I was living on the Gold Coast at the time and I did my camp here in Sydney. Um and I was bouncing between the two a little bit and then I was just like, Oh after that fight I don't I didn't want to blow out and I didn't wanna kind of uh, stop training and everything and I find on the Gold Coast I, I like will end up working and stuff like that and trying to earn money um, and it kind of stops me from training full time or at least twice a day and stuff like that so heading over to Asia was probably like the best option for me to keep my weight down keep in shape keep everything going and kind of keeping the momentum and it really did do that like I went back to Tiger um, I was I can train two three times a day whenever whatever time of the day I want and it's always super beneficial to be living in that kind of environment um eating healthy and being near the beach and chilling out and it was kind of well earned and then uh then went over to the UK and fortunately for me I've kind of uh set up a good network over there as well that I can sort of do the same thing I've got a like conventional gym then I've got an MMA gym and I can bounce between the two and I can really um just keep that like flow going and I like from my fight in May, I hadn't really fought previously since May the year before. So it had been like a year of me going kind of like up and down in my training a little bit, like full-time, not full-time, full-time, not full-time, like kind of casual. And yeah, to travel for me um, in the last like six to eight months has been more beneficial for ongoing training and everything like that. After that travel, you went back to Australia, B2B fight night you dipped your feet into the boxing a little bit about a month yeah. ago how was that yeah. experience yeah it was heaps of fun um heading over to melbourne um getting to like know a lot more of the boxing promoters and that boxing world it's such a um so different to mma i mean everyone would think all co combat sports kind of coincide but they really don't like muay thai to mma to boxing it's just three different whole different communities of different people and yeah, like we know bits and pieces, but it's like until you kind of get in there, you really realize that you're like sort of an outsider, I guess. Um, but it was heaps of fun. I love boxing. I love throwing hands. That was my uh, fourth professional boxing fight. So um, I've done it a couple of times before and I've always enjoyed it. And having that kind of, um, I guess, like lack of fear of getting taken down and you can really just isolate the hands and you can just like go for it is really good and um she had a lot of kind of rep behind her being a, a Collingwood AFL player and everything like that so she had a massive backing and it was good exposure for me and everything like that and 
yeah, I think I surprised a lot of people um, on the night and I came up a couple of weight divisions. So, yeah, the experience was awesome. I really enjoyed it. I saw you working at Logan Boxing Gym, which means that you were just focused on boxing. For how many weeks was your camp? Um, all up, because I was, I was literally on the way back from the UK. Mm. I came, I was, I was like in one of the airports when they messaged me. Um, I was meant to fight Taylor in August and July, mm. but they kept um, pushing their show back. And so, and I was in Phuket at the time. They were going to fly me from Phuket and that was going to be all sweet. But then they kept pushing the show back and it was really annoying um, for me because I couldn't stay in Asia for that long because I had other places to go. And um, so then when I was coming back from the UK, it just so happened that they messaged me that she was ready for um, this particular date. And it worked out for me. I had about three weeks um, all up. And yeah, I was just I was just boxing between Heartbreak and Logan Boxing um, I was just kind of like just doing hands the whole time, mainly for the gas tank of, of boxing because of those two minute rounds. But um, I also kind of enjoyed, like, I, I think I rolled like twice or something during the camp, but just to like keep my brain active and not fizz out too much on, on the hands. But yeah, mainly just boxing. Was it difficult to get Bellator to allow you to box? Um, Not, not really because... Uh, like it was main it's mainly just like if they don't have anything for me and we've been talking about my second fight with them for a long time and it's kind of just keep kept getting pushed back a little bit um because they had so much going on which is fair enough so it was just kind of like oh I'm gonna box since you guys are taking a little bit longer than expected to get me back on and then as soon as I sort of took that boxing fight I then got matched up with Sunid and um, it kind of ended up like being one of those things that I'll jump out of that boxing camp and straight into the MMA camp, but it worked out perfectly where they were five weeks apart and I could um, comfortably do that without injuring myself and everything. So it was kind of good. How was that transition from having a boxing camp to an MMA camp? Yeah, it's always like a totally different round times, totally different fitness. And obviously you're incorporating a lot more than just boxing. Um, but it was at the same time, it was really good because Sunid's a boxer as well, so that kind of worked out well. She was She's totally different to the girl that I did fight in boxing, um, but at the same time, working on those hands has really backed my confidence of my hands because I've, I've kind of crisped them up a lot and I got rid of a lot of bad habits. Even in that short time, I was just drilling hands, so um, you can only get better from that. And then moving forward, I can just go back and... I think you enjoy jiu-jitsu and, and kicking and kneeing and all that stuff a little bit more once you've kind of done that boxing as well. So you're kind of like, yeah, yeah, I can flow and do all sorts of shit and be a little bit more creative um, in my striking. So it's been really good. I, and at the same time, I was, I was I was really fit going into this MMA camp because mm-hmm. I just finished one camp. So it has all kind of been perfect so far. Is the road work harder for boxing compared to MMA? It's like same, same. I think like more than since I didn't have to lose much weight. Um, usually I run to lose weight. Like mm. it's just kind of like that calorie burning, slow, um, low heart rate kind of weight burn. Mm. But like for the boxing fight, I didn't have to um, lose any because I was just coming up a weight division instead. And um, at the same time, I just kind of did a whole lot of uh, like bag sprints and aerodyne sprints. I was doing more sprints than I was kind of. Um, road work mm. so it was kind of really good and now I'm kind of back into obviously losing weight for 65 and um, I'll be doing sprints as well but yeah really I, I'd say like MMA is kind of been harder for if, if I compare the last two camps <laughs> your upcoming opponent at Bellator 207 Sinead Kavanaugh she's a SBG <coughs> fighter what are your thoughts on her um, I think she's a, a great name and she'll be a great scout for me mm. um when I get the win because obviously she's five and two, she's fought some good people. She has that kind of um, the SBG background and the notorious um, gym that she's at is really good. And I think all of those things would be really good. I, I like like her performances and she's a real tough girl. And I think like stylistically that this will be a good fight for me because of um, – even though I kind of haven't shown it in every one of my fights, sometimes I do get stuck in the brawl, but a lot of times I try to stay technical in my striking. 
and I think that kind of comparison and um, the conflict will really work well in like I think it'll be a really good fight and at least one of us will get a finish but of course I'm going to back myself on that one Have you heard of the SBG curse? No, I haven't it's the really? curse of the notorious. <laughs> you oh, know? Really? Yes, because since he's so successful, everybody else yeah. in SBG has been, you know, going through much of a hard time in their careers, if you noticed. No way. I didn't even, like, I, the only other person I've really seen has been um, that Brad Katona that was on the um, Ultimate Fighter. And then, yeah, like, Dylan Dennis and stuff goes there. And, I mean, he did all right in his. But I don't, I don't know if that's his main gym or yeah. It's funny because like I haven't really seen anyone else be that successful from the gym, and this is probably the first person I've ever even thought of fighting from the gym, of course, because I don't think they have a lot of females, um, let alone at featherweight and in Bellator. So yeah, I've never even heard of that. That's pretty funny. <laughs> you all, you just mentioned that they don't really seem like they have a lot of females. Your gym, Australian Top Team, has a few females, but. None of them, you know, in your weight class. So when you spar, when you train, you're mostly training with guys. Do you like that aspect or do you need some women to come in and kind of give you a different feel? Um, I do think you need a balance. I do, I do enjoy training with dudes. I've always done that and I've always kind of had training partners as males and stuff like that, which has been great because you get pushed and it's a strong kind of competition there. But at the same time, you do need that aspect of, having a female that's going to go 100% that the same as the guys would go against each other and having someone that would really just like throw down when you need hard sparring rounds and all that sort of stuff. And it's just like a different feel um, when it gets to sparring and competition between a female and female. So I think you need like a balance. But lucky enough for me, I've got um, like a, a, a lot of the girls, they are a couple of weight divisions below me, but they're, they're big for their division. So it's kind of been positive in a way where, like, I mean, Daniel Hayes, she's super, super strong. So I like that for me has been really positive where she's not necessarily the same size as me, but she is really strong and that really helps me out during training, inspiring, all that kind of stuff. So it's been good. You both have a common opponent in Arlene Blenkow. Have you yeah. watched that fight and studied her performance? Yeah, I have. I've watched a bit of it. Yeah. And what did you it's think it, about that fight? Did you think that she lost a split decision? I don't know. Like, I think it was close. And it depends kind of what angle you're going to look at it. But um, the fact that it even went the three rounds, I think, for both of them, they probably could have um, finished it, like, both of them. Because, I mean, I know Arlene has a lot of power in her hands, and then so does Sunid. So it's kind of like, I feel like, they both got caught in the brawl of each other's kind of game at the same time, but nobody was really prevailing. So it's hard, I think, for a judge's point of view, it's hard to find a standout when it comes to a fight so close like that. And when you get caught kind of in that back and forth um, and nobody's really coming out of the exchanges to better or worse. So it's sort of, um, it's a funny thing. But yeah, and I, I know it's definitely close, but um, I think like, Arlene's overall athleticism and everything was probably a lot better. And um, just because she's such a experienced athlete and she's kind of done so much more. So I think for her to have them for like for, for the title and stuff, I think that's worthy at the same time. So I'm not, I'm not necessarily mad at the decision. Kavanaugh, she is tough. You know, she comes forward. She throws hard. Is yeah. your goal to, you know, since you've had so many close fights and your last fight was close, even though it was a unanimous decision, a lot of people that watch the fight, they know that that was a lot closer than what the judges saw. Is your goal in this fight to kind of have a dominant performance go in there and finish it and have no questions? 100%. Um, just changing it up and, um, <clears throat> like I said, kind of like not – even though I haven't shown it, like just not getting caught up in the brawl, even though I can take punches and I've got a hard head, like that's not, that shouldn't be my kind of um, overall strength. Um, and I know that I'm a lot better than my performances and what I've shown. So um, I definitely want to go out there and be a lot more technical and a lot more dominant, um, not just in the way of uh, striking, but in like cage control and 
and footwork and movement and all these kind of things that I've been working for so long that I um, definitely stunted, in, especially in that last performance because of the, the step back of being in a big promotion. I think that really hindered the, the amount of creativity I made and the amount of problem solving I did in during the performance. So for this one, it's a totally different mindset and it's, I think I'm on a much better track um, to just really back my gas tank as well for being able to do all these things and being able to really be creative and move around. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to um, showing a lot more. That's for sure. With the women's division, the women's featherweight division in Bellator, it's pretty much the shallowest division in MMA, right? <laughs> it's not in a bad way. It's just there's not that many women out there that are featherweights. Yeah. What are the benefits of having the least amount of bodies in your weight class? I guess it's you kind of move forward a lot quicker and you kind of um, get to fight like those high level names a lot earlier in your career, which is positive and negative, but mainly positive because you get to share those experiences sort of early and you get to make those big kind of like money fights, I guess, kind of early because there's not a lot. Um, but at the same time, we're all probably going to have to fight each other a lot, um, like more than once, um, quite often, which is like some, most of the time it's good for the spectators, spectators to see, but of course you want, you want new opponents and you want new challenges and you want different styles to put your style against. So, um, there's kind of like pros and cons, I guess, to, to even the positive. Your last fight was in San Jose on the West coast. This yeah. fight, Bellator 207, is on the East Coast in Connecticut. Yeah. Have you yeah. been to Connecticut before? Never. I've never even been to like the, the, anything close to the East Coast. I've only ever really been West Coast or Las Vegas. And um, so like this will be totally different. But I'm looking forward to um, – because like, I find America – like you go from one state to another. It's like another country. Like you go from <laughs> – like, like in Australia you go – Sydney, Melbourne, like kind of the same, but like you know that they're a little bit different, but they they're still like that ongoing consistency. And then Queensland's just like hotter and different. But with like America, you go from like Las Vegas to San Jose, and um, in comparison, they're totally different place. One's is like a desert, dry, super like early in the morning the sun comes up, totally different climate. And then San Jose is like more chilled out, a little bit more humid, more like neutral. Like, it's just so random, but I think, like, this will be... I'm not really sure what to expect from Connecticut. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go to New York afterwards. Um, that's the plan because I can't take up that opportunity being so close. But um, Connecticut itself, I haven't really heard much about it, and I'm not really sure what to expect. But, I mean, it's on the East Coast. It's kind of near the coastline. Um, Ucansville's kind of down the bottom as well, so it's right along that um, shore I don't know. It will be interesting. I'm excited, at least. It's always good to see new places. Definitely. Well, October 12th, <laughs> Bellator 207. Janae Harding will face Sinead Kavanaugh in Connecticut. Thank you for your time, Janae. And uh, so. I'll speak to you again. Yeah, for sure. Thank you.